Hello everyone. Today we're going over the sequence and mechanics of ascending the climbing rope. Hi there, I'm Jason. We're talking about ascending the climbing rope today. Knowing how to ascend the rope is a necessary skill for managing self-rescue should things go wrong on a technical rock climb. But the technique can be helpful in other situations as well, especially when you're climbing with kids. In our previous video, we talked about the things that we do to create a safe and enjoyable environment when we take the kids climbing. And we mentioned that one of the things that was helpful as the kids were beginning was having me hang on a fixed line next to the route. The fixed line allowed us to help coach the kids through, at first, the uncomfortableness and fear of being in a vertical environment when all of that was new to them. Let go. Your left hand's quivering because you're so nervous. And then eventually to help coach them through tricky moves as they push their abilities. In the crack and above your head. You did it. Yep, yeah, you did it all on your own. So I actually spent quite a bit of time ascending and descending the rope when the kids were just beginning their outdoor climbing. But that might feel like a nice to have skill if that's all you need it for. Well, it becomes a must have skill if an injury happens to a climber who is above the belay, whether that be a lead climber on a multi pitch route or a climber up on a single pitch top rope. Breaking self-rescue of a climber who's above you down into its component parts, you need to be able to escape the belay, ascend the rope, transition to descending on the rope, and know how to safely bring an injured climber down with you. So we'll be doing a series of videos on each of these components of a rescue, but we're starting with the elements that can be useful, like I described, even when a rescue isn't needed, and those are ascending and transitioning to descent. And of course, step one is ascent, and that's the topic for today. To ascend the rope, you first want to attach some kind of safety to the rope. You can do this, like I demonstrated in our YouTube short, by attaching an auto block to the rope, or you could potentially do this by tying safety knots below you as you ascend. I like the auto block because I'm gonna want it when I move to descending anyway. I'm going to use a hollow block by Sterling Rope, which is woven Technora fiber that is stronger than steel creates more friction when pulled because of the hollow core and doesn't suffer from the low melting point of Dyneema, which can matter when you're gonna have the rope running through a hitch. I'm gonna tie it to my leg loop, which you should only do if your harness has buckles that are climbing rated on the legs. And I'm gonna to try to yank the rope through the hitch to make sure that the hitch will grab, as well as make sure that the hitch can't reach and potentially get sucked into the capture device that I'm gonna place on my belay loop. And that becomes the next step attaching a capture device to the rope. There are multiple ways to do this. If you have a belay device that has a guide mode capability, then you can attach it to your belay harness in guide mode. The benefit of using this equipment is that you don't have to buy additional equipment and the exact same mechanics as every other time that you've belayed in guide mode are done here. The downside is that the rope can be kind of hard to pull through. You could use an assisting device like this Grigri 2. The major advantage of a Grigri is that when you transition to descend, a process that we'll cover in the next video, you don't have to change anything about how the device is set up. The downsides are that Grigri's are kind of expensive and they're a tiny bit hard to pull the rope through on ascent, but not as hard as a basket device in guide mode. And finally, you can use a rope capture device like this micro traction. The microtraction is doing the job it was designed explicitly to do, so it has the advantage of being extremely easy to pull the rope through because you're doing it on an integrated pulley. The downsides are that it uses teeth to capture the rope, which can damage the sheath of your rope if you were to take a big fall on it, but frankly that shouldn't happen if you're on ascent and you're pulling the rope through as you go. But it also has the most complicated transition to descent. Lastly, in setting up my ascent system, I need to attach a foot loop to the rope. For longer slings, like a lot of people, I carry lightweight and strong Dyneema runners. Well, because of the low melting point of Dyneema, you don't want to attach this to the rope with a friction hitch if you need to pull the rope through, which we're going to have to do. 
So I use a tip lock, making sure to run the carabiner through the tip lock and behind the rope. From here, the ascent sequence is fairly simple. Step up by using the foot loop, which also unweights the capture device that's at your belay loop. Now pull the slack through the capture device, weighting you at your waist and now unweighting your foot loop. And you repeat. You can now raise the height of the foot loop, step into it, pull the slack through your capture device, and do it again and again until you're where you need to be. Every few sequences, you need to deal with your safety by pulling the slack through your auto block, which you can do as you go, or by tying a safety knot below your capture device, which you can only do every so often because you need to have enough slack in the rope between your capture device and your last safety knot to allow you to tie a new knot. So that's the ascending sequence, which you can use to move alongside a kid who may be new to climbing and who needs some support, or which is fully necessary to be able to go get a climber who may be injured above you. In our next video, we'll talk about transitioning from ascending to descending. Let us know in the comments section if you're looking forward to that one. If you want additional thoughts related to this video and any video that we produce, along with links to equipment we discuss, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. And if you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We produce educational content like this, as well as short films of our family adventures, and we release something new every week. So if you have ideas for content that you'd like to see, you can put those suggestions in the comments too. Until next time, keep on getting more out of that big outside.